Yeah, yeah. And where did you do your medical training? In in Lund, Lund uh-huh. University. Yes. So, so, so you did a medical degree, then you did specialised training to be a general practitioner doctor. Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 And and for the last few months, what have you been doing? Well, it's a little more than three months since I um, I started working full time with the project of trying to convince uh, authorities actually to to uh, supply oxygen to the care homes uh, for the elderly that uh, because I got directions sent to me when I was working and a film that explained how I should care plan all my patients that had risk risk factors or was uh, over 80 and that they should not be sent to the hospital but uh, be given palliative care in their homes instead and this video showed uh, us how we should do it and uh, there was no mention of oxygen in the video only that the first thing you do is to give morphine And of course, I saw a catastrophe coming in Sweden, because if you only give morphine uh, in um, COVID-19 infection, you're going to see a large uh, degree of of casualties. Uh, So I was uh, I was shocked. And then I took my decision to uh, dedicate myself full time. uh, So I'm on leave. Uh, dedicating myself to get the information out into the public, what we are doing, what the directions from authorities say, and w- how that will influence uh, the death toll. Uh, so this is so but basically this is for people over eighty. No, really, it is. It it you it's uh, it it's over sixty if you have a lot of risk factors too. What what sort of risk factors would you be worried about, John? Well, I, I, I think there's, there, it's not specific, uh, the risk factors, but I mean uh, hypertension, diabetes, all, all the, the common risk factors. Of the, the common chronic diseases. And even uh, if you had um, uh, some, some kind of, uh, you know, abuse, narcotics or alcoholic abuse, uh, um, so, uh, and, and uh, chronic um, lung a disease or something like that so it's the usual uh, that that could exclude you from uh, from hospital care so doctors in sweden were actually sent like a circular or something saying don't admit these people to acute hospital care yeah it's uh, it's i mean i i have the written documents it's it's common practice and i mean it's it's in the statements too of people uh, who who has gotten it. I, I just got a hold of a of a municipality meeting from a municipality in Sweden where you can hear that uh, the directions are that we shouldn't send uh, these people to the hospital, but instead administer palliative care at home. And I have uh, so many witnesses from all over the country saying the same things. Uh, even uh, one of the first nurses I I um, I interviewed as evidence, so to speak. She she said that in their whole region, people are not sent to the hospital if they have risk factors or, or uh, are above 80. And instead, they are uh, care planned uh, to get palliative care. And even the witnesses I've, I've spoken to, there's a lot of people who has gotten the been care planned without knowing it. Uh, and it's in the, um, the journal that they should not send, be sent to the hospital if they are infected with COVID-19, but instead receive palliative care with morphine and medicine. 